In this video, I will show you how you can connect ManyChat to ChatGPT without writing any code. And we will set it up so that when someone asks a question in ManyChat, we send the question to ChatGPT, ChatGPT gives the answer and we send it right back to ManyChat. So at the end of this video, you have a fully functional integration that automatically replies to questions with AI. And I will even give you the template for free so that you can copy and paste it. Let's get started. So ManyChat has a direct integration with OpenAI, but I don't recommend using it because each time you send a message, that message is handled separately and it doesn't remember the conversation history. So instead of using the direct integration, we will create our own integration with ChatGPT. And we're going to do that in two simple steps. First, we're going to create our own OpenAI assistant that is trained on our data. And then we're going to create an integration so that each time someone asks a question in ManyChat, it will be sent to ChatGPT, ChatGPT gives the answer back and we send that answer to the user. And this integration will work on any channel, whether you're going to use it for WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram, it doesn't matter. So the first step is to create our open AI assistant. So in order to do that, you can just go to platform.openai.com. And when you're going to create your assistant, it's very important that you have some credit balance in your account. So if you go here to the settings, then go to billing, then here you need to have some credit balance. And it can be as low as $5, but there need to be something in there so that ChatGPT will actually work for you. So once you have your credit balance, we can actually start with creating our assistant. So when you go to the playground, then here you can click on assistance and then we can create a new assistant. So you can just click on this and then click on create assistant. And then here you can give this a name. So we can give it a user friendly name. So I would just call this the e-commerce biz assistant. So in this video, we will just be creating an AI assistant for an e-commerce business. And I'm just using this as an example. You can basically create an assistant for each and every business using the same methods that I explain in this video. So the first step here is to give it the system instructions. So here are just very general instructions. I'll just add the prompt and you will also get this prompt with my template. So when you download the template, you will also automatically get this prompt, but it's very general. We will say something like, you're an AI chatbot. You need to give answers to questions. You need to be friendly, excellent, efficient, all that stuff. And then we also say that they never should mention that they have access to training data, all of that stuff that you would normally expect with this. So then you can click on save here and then we need to determine the model. So for this time, I'm just going to use GPT-4, but you can change it to any model you would like to use. And then the next step is to actually use the file search. Oh, that's not enabled for this model. So I will just use GPT-4 mini because then we can use the file search. So with the file search, what you can actually do is you can give ChatGPT documents and then it will train itself on those documents. So in this case, I'm going to enable this and then I'm going to upload a file and that is the e-commerce business knowledge base. So this is a very simple document that I have over here. You will get that with my template as well, which basically contains information about an e-commerce business. So do you want to return your items? What is the return term? Are there return fees at your own expense? Can I exchange my item for another item? Like all of that stuff, like delivery information, warranty, like general stuff for an e-commerce business. And in your case, you can just create your own document and then feed that document to your assistant. So you can just go back Click on attach and now it will be trained on that specific document. And then that's basically it. So now your e-commerce business assistant is created and we can actually start with talking to it. And I must say that when you're talking it to it, like here in the playground, it gives less good responses than when we're using it with the integration. I'm not sure why that is, but I will just show you like why, why it's weird. So for example, here in this uh, document, it says, what is the return term? So when I just say, what is the return term? It says, could you please clarify what specific context or field you're referring to? So that's pretty weird. But if I say, what is the return term of e-commerce biz, let's say that this will be like the name of the business, then it is running the retrieval, basically looking up like information um, inside the documents and then it says the return for e-commerce biz is 14 days. So when you're testing here, like be sure that it doesn't always give 
uh, uh, like a good answer if you're not really specific. So just know that it can give less good responses when you're using it here in the playgrounds. With our integration, we can make sure that each time someone asks a question, he is going through all the files that you trained the chatbot on. So you know that the assistant is looking through the files and not doing that while you actually want that to do that. So that's basically how we set this up. So our assistant is currently working. So now we need to make sure that each time someone asks a question in ManyChat, we send that to ChatGPT. In order to do that, we need to set up some ManyChat fields and some ManyChat automations. So if we head over to ManyChat, we can just go to settings and then go to fields. And here we need to create three fields. So you can just click on new user fields. And the first field that we're going to create is ChatGPT question. So this is basically the question that we're going to send to ChatGPT. So click on create. Then we have the ChatGPT response. So this is basically the response that we get back from ChatGPT. Click on create as well. And then lastly, we have the ChatGPT thread ID. So a thread in ChatGPT is basically a conversation. And whenever we have a conversation with ChatGPT, we get an ID back, an identifier. And we need to save that identifier in ManyChat so that ManyChat knows that it is talking to this specific thread ID. So basically, whenever you hear thread, think conversation. So you can create this as well. Click on create. And then we are going to determine what channel we want to connect this to. So in this video, I will be using WhatsApp, but you can basically use the same structure for each and any one of these channels. So here we can click on WhatsApp, and then we're going to set up the default reply. So the default reply is the automation that starts whenever someone asks a question and it doesn't activate any of your other ManyChat automation. So basically, whenever someone asks a question, your ManyChat bot doesn't know the answer to, then it triggers the default reply. And that's basically when we want to send that question to ChatGPT. So here we can just click on create a new reply. And then inside this new reply, we need to make sure that the user sends a message every time. So we need to trigger this every time they're sending a message. And then we can basically remove this WhatsApp message and then go with actions, click on plus action. And then the first thing that we need to do is set the ChatGPT question. So here we can click on contact data, click on set user fields, and then set it to ChatGPT question. And we are going to set this to the last text input. So here we can click on the brackets and then search for last text input. So the last text input is basically a built-in variable inside ManyChat that basically contains the question that someone asks, like basically the last text that they sent to your ManyChat bot. So here we're going to save that and then we need to trigger the integration that we're going to send this question to OpenAI. And in order to do that, we will be using Make. So Make is an integration platform that you can use to connect two apps to each other without writing any code. And if you want to get started with Make, you can basically just go to chatomize.com slash make. And then if you use my link, you will sign up for a Make account and you will get 30 days of the pro plan for free. So that's what you basically need to do. I would just go back here. I already opened my Make account. And when you like log into Make, you will see this. And then we can just create a new scenario. And then normally you would build your scenario from scratch, but I already pre-built our scenario. And that's also part of the free template that you can sign up with the link here below. So when you click here on more, we can actually import the blueprint that is part of my template. So we can just click on this. And then here, click on ChatGPT ManyChat integration. So that's what you will get when you sign up for my free template. And then you get this. So first I will explain how this integration basically works and then we will connect it to our ManyChat account and to our OpenAI account. Now how this begins is whenever we send data from ManyChat, this automation starts and then it does a check. So first we check whether we already have a thread ID in ManyChat. So this is basically the conversation ID I talked earlier about. So if we don't have a thread ID, well, we basically, we go this route and we basically send the question to OpenAI and create a new conversation at the same time. And then we send some stuff back to ManyChat. So we send back the thread ID, we send back the ChatGPT response. So that's basically the answer that we get from ChatGPT. And then we send the ManyChat flow. So that's like the first option. And the second option is that like, if we already have a thread ID, so we have an ongoing conversation with OpenAI, we just add a message to that conversation. Then we get a response back from OpenAI and then we're going to set the ChatGPT response in ManyChat and we're going 
going to send a ManyChat flow. And that's basically how this complete integration work. So let's connect this now to our account. So here you can just click on this first thing and then we need to create a webhook. So webhook is whenever we send data from ManyChat to make, that's basically called a webhook. So you can just click on create a webhook and then you can just call this send question to chat GPT and I'll just call this tutorial. And then we also need to create a connection. So you can click on this and I will just set this to the name of my ManyChat account. So I'll just call this Chatomize. And then we put in here the access token. So the access token is the API token in your ManyChat account. So when you go to ManyChat and then go to settings, then here, uh, if you scroll down here, you have the API and then here you have the API key. So you can just copy this key and then you can paste that over here and then click on save. And then you can click on save again. And now that webhook is created. So basically each time we send data to the webhook, then automatically this scenario starts. So in order to connect this to our default reply in ManyChat, what we can do is can click on plus action, then click on make, and then click on trigger make. And here you can just put in send question to ChatGPT tutorial in my case and then click on set live. So how this basically works, each time someone sends a message and it triggers the default reply, we send the chat GPT question to the last text input and then we trigger make. So this is where this starts. And now we need to connect this to OpenAI as well. So when you click on this, then we need to create an OpenAI connection. So here I will just call this again, Chatomize. And here we need to put in our API key and our organization ID. So if we go back here, and if we go back to the dashboard, then here we have API keys, and then we can just cl click on create a new secret key. And then I recommend setting it up with a service account. And then I will just call this uh, Chatomize uh, Mini Chat Tutorial. And then click on create secret key. And then we can just copy this key and then paste it over here where it says API key. And then also we need to add the organization ID. So in order to get the organization ID, we go here to the settings and then here you have the organization ID. We can just copy that and then paste that over here. And now that is working. So in order to connect this to our assistant, what we can do is we can choose the assistant. So in this case, that is the e-commerce biz assistant automatically already set correctly. Then the role will be user. The data we will be sending is the ChatGPT question. So this is correct. Uh, we don't have a thread ID yet. We're going to create that. And then as a tool choice, you need to add file search. So here you can choose from multiple stuff. You need to add file search. And this makes sure that every time you send a question to your open AI assistant, it will actually search all of your files. So whenever you don't do this, you get the error that we got before with, hey, what is the return term? It doesn't look up the files and you don't get a good answer. So you want to enable the file search here so that each time you send something, to OpenAI, it actually searches the files. So once you've set this all correctly, you can set this to OK. And then we can basically set up the same thing over here. So we can reuse the same connection that we already created. And then here you need to choose the right assistant that we already did. So I will go with the e-commerce business assistant. And then here, all the stuff is the same except for the thread ID because now we already have a thread ID. So we only activate this when we have an ongoing conversation. So then we have the thread ID already from ManyChat. So we can just click on OK. And then we also need to connect all of this stuff. Uh, all of this stuff, sorry for that. So the thread ID, again, we can reuse the ManyChat connection. We have the subscriber ID from the first step. We have the ChatGPT thread ID. And now it looks like this is set up correctly, but it isn't. So here you need to uh, search for this again, because if you don't do that, it won't work. So you basically need to re-add the same stuff because here you can like, you see it twice. Like that's, that's a difference. Like for computers, that's the difference. So here you can just click on this and then it will work. This is still uh, good. And then the same thing for the ChatGPT response. So again, connect this and search again for ChatGPT response because otherwise like it, it looks like it is good. It is not good. Click on okay. And then here, do that again. And do that again. Uh, I think I didn't do that correctly, so I will do it again. Yeah, and that is working. And then lastly, we also need to send a ManyChat flow. So, and we still need to create that flow. So in order to do that, we can just go to automation 
This is a very simple flow. It only does basically one thing. We send a WhatsApp message with, and we can click on brackets on our keyboard, or you can just click here. And then we can say ChatGPT response. And it basically just gives the response from ChatGPT in WhatsApp. So we created this. And then here, when you create that, if you go to the URL bar, here you have a content. Uh, so after files, you have like content and then a lot of numbers. You need to copy this because this is your flow ID, which we need to add to ManyChat. So, or to make, sorry for that. So here again, choose the channelized connection, subscriber ID, that's fine. And then here you can just copy and paste that. And then here we can do the same thing. And then click on OK. So now that is working correctly. And before I'm going to show you that it works on WhatsApp, I first want to quickly talk about the ChatGPT response. Because here we have a pretty difficult formula that actually replaces some information in the response. And I'll just show you why I did this. So if we here, if we go back to the playground and then I can go to assistance and then select the right assistant. Then here, if I type in, what is the return term of e-commerce biz? Then it gives me the answer. And then at the end here, you see that it includes a one. So this refers to the file it has searched for, but we actually don't want to include this one inside the response that we give back to the user. And that's basically what I do over here. I replace that response with basically nothing. So we basically remove this one stuff. We remove that from the response. So just know how that works. So that's basically how it works. Then we can just hit save and then click on on. And then if you go back to your ManyChat automations, uh, then this also set to live. This also set to live. So this is working correctly. And now I'll just show you how this works on WhatsApp. So now I'm on WhatsApp. And then if I say, what is your return policy? And then it says the return policy is as follows. The return period is 14 days. The return process is three simple steps. Here are the return fees and here are the exchanges. And then we can say, okay, if I order today, when will I get the order at home and it says if you place your order before it's free it will be shipped from the warehouse within two business days if your order exceeds 50 euros it is free otherwise it's five euros and as you can see the responses that we get here via our integration are way better than using the open ai playground and i'm not sure why that is but it is better for your mini chat ai chatbot and what's also good to know is that if we go back to make and then go back here, then you can also see the history. So you can see the history of all the messages were sent, how long that took, if there were any errors and all of that stuff. So that's actually great as well. So you can basically analyze a lot of that stuff in Make. And that's how you can connect ManyChat to ChatGPT. But there's one drawback of this. The ManyChat OpenAI assistants are currently in beta. And that means that OpenAI is still working on this feature. And because of that, there could be some problems sometimes. And as you already saw, it can sometimes take 10 or 15 seconds before you get a response. And because of this, I don't recommend using it in a live environment. So if you want to create a ManyChat AI chatbot for an actual business, please check out this video.